So I'm going to narrate the Glasgow Caledonian University's animation. They did this several years ago for us, and we're really grateful to them. But we've never had an animation. So we're going to launch from low Earth orbit. And a lot of things are going to happen really quickly here. And you'll note that this rocket looks a lot like, say, a Falcon Heavy or, or um, a space launch system from NASA. Uh, when we first created this idea, uh, we came up with three mandates. One of them was single launch solution. The other one was Sputnik-like simplicity, and the final one is uh, purchase orderable technology. Uh, but single launch solution really uh, is important in this, in this video, the way this story unfolds. Uh, and when we first looked at this problem, we were looking at uh, much smaller rockets. When we were first envisioning the lunar elevator, we were envisioning um, uh, a much smaller uh, launch vehicle. We were looking at atlases and, and deltas. Um, but over time, with the evolution of reusable rocketry and some of the innovation that uh, Blue Origin and SpaceX have really changed the environment so dramatically, um, we've upgraded our designs as, as rocketry has gotten better and better. So, um, when we get to low Earth orbit, that's just really the beginning of our journey. That's only the first tiniest stage of our journey. What we have to do is move out to the Lagrange point. The Lagrange point is that gravitational middle between the moon and the Earth. Uh, it's about here. Uh, that gravitational middle, the Lagrange point, is really important for how the rest of this program unfolds. So once we get to that gravitational middle, everything starts to happen all at once. Um, but how did we get there? The, how do we get from the Lagrange, from LEO to the Lagrange? Uh, that's not an, a typical transition. You usually you go from LEO and you stay there, or you go from LEO to GEO, um, but really nobody is going to L1, so we're going to have to figure out a way to do that. Now, um, we have considered uh, originally building our own system, uh, an electric engine, an ion engine of some kind, to slowly push out to the L point. Uh, but now with the advent of in-space in transportation and space tugs, there are quite a few more options, at least two, maybe three, maybe four other legitimate options to getting us from point A to point B. So uh, it's still very much a work in progress, but uh, it's nice to know we don't have to build that part ourselves anymore. So uh, when we get to, when we get here, when we get to the uh, L point, the artist took a lot of liberties here, uh, and that's okay, that was alright. They, we talked about single launch solutions, so they packed, they packed everything into this one big box. Um, we know that that's not how this is going to unfold, but, but, you know, it's a seven minute video, so, you know, uh, we had to take some, some liberties here. Uh, but this is all happening at the L point here. A couple things are going to happen at the same time. Uh, we're going to drop our, our anchor station down to the surface of the moon. We'll come back to that in a second. The counterweight is going to push back towards the Earth. Uh, you know, in a world where SpaceX is working really hard to recover their fairings, their, their, their cargo fairings, <coughs> um, our plan may not be uh, actionable. We, we, it might not work. Uh, when we first looked at this, we had assumed that you know everybody was throwing their fairings into the ocean, and we're saying, well, you know, let's let's hang on to that. That's a pretty big mass, and the more mass we have, the better our counterweight becomes. So we were hoping that we were going to capture all that all of that hardware and use it as part of our our countermass. Uh, that that plan may have to change now. We'll we'll see how that uh, evolves. So, as this is starting to unfold, uh, 
the space station in this video implies that it's already pre-built and ready to go. Uh, again, you know, artists taking liberties, but, but this is really important that we will have a very large uh, crewable space station there. Um, in this configuration, it's um, about double, maybe three times, about three times the capacity of the International Space Station. These are modeled after Bigelow's 330, uh, BA 330. Uh, Bigelow may or may not be in business by the time we need to do this. Uh, they recently had a lot of layoffs, but our hope is that that technology will still be available to us uh, in, the, in the near future. And if it's not Bigelow, it's probably somebody else because there are several space station companies in development. As the counterweight is pushing, dropping, sinking, gravitationally falling towards the moon, uh, that's where all the action is right now. So as this counterweight is, uh, is coming down, a couple things are going to happen as it's descending. Uh, first of all, right now, currently, we don't have clear maps of our target destination. We want to go to Sinus Midday. Uh, that's the midpoint on the moon. If you were to look at the full moon, if you do X marks the spot over the center of it, that spot is where we're going. Uh, but we don't have good maps. So as this, this counter, I'm sorry, as this anchor station is descending down, um, it's going to have a pendulum style motion and that's going to help uh, with our photography It'll, by having this motion we're going to be able to see kind of a, we're going to be able to create a 3d model of our landing site uh, that's going to give us a little bit of capability to pick and choose but but we're really going to have to depend on uh, uh, you know real-time developments and some AI to figure out exactly where we're going to land and how we're going to land. Uh, but as we're descending, here's what's going to happen. No matter what we do, it's going to be an uneven surface. Whether it's big rocks or little rocks, it's still going to be an uneven surface. So as we descend, we're going to land and we're going to have to level ourselves. Now it's hard to see in this video, but look carefully at the round the edges there are a series of screws and these screws on the edges kind of dig in and stabilize uh, for really the main event as these uh, as these screws are holding the holding the system from turning at all uh, the main drill sinks in and that's that's about a three meters, three meter uh, drill. So it really does sink in there. And once it's sunk, it then pops out barbs that hold it even tighter to the moon. So uh, that anchor station is everything. If that part fails, then the rest of the system is going to fail. So uh, we're gonna put an awful lot of effort into that, into that anchor station. So assuming that works, fingers crossed, um, then the next part, what, what happens next? Well, we've now got a string attached to the surface of the moon. Might as well, you know, start completing the, the infrastructure of the, of the lunar elevator. So uh, some, some of the parts happen at this space station, but now we're really making the first ascent of the lifter and the first piece of cargo. Again, artistic licenses here. Uh, but as you look at this piece, kind of, kind of pay attention to a couple parts. First of all, um, this configuration fits for getting into the rocket, the, ro uh, the, the fairing of our launch vehicle. Uh, 